to talk to you this morning about some work that we've been doing for a number of years, approximately 10 years, in fact. And it's about what we now call GoldenEye 8. It's a user interface. And it's designed as a shell that sits in an Android or Windows environment and brings to you a lot of resources that I think have been uh, either lacking or have not been everything that you wanted them to be in order to use more advanced capabilities like speech recognition. So this is, for us, we consider it a paradigm shift. It, it's not about a tablet or a notebook or a smartphone. It's not about a piece of hardware, per se. It's about an AR UI interface which actually infuses, brings together AI. And the purpose behind it is to give you what you want, when you want it, wherever you are, and to optimize your ability to snack on information. It's a hands-free audio-visual experience. That's how we see AR. And I stressed on the audio because audio is so underrated. Um, people think that you have to touch things and you have to read things and you have to see things, but when you're using your GPS in your car, you don't stare at the screen while you're driving down the road. You listen for the audible cues. So if you're working somewhere and you get an SMS message while you're busy working, do you want to have to stop and read it? Or can you just say, read it to me? Or who's it from? And then decide whether you want to answer at that moment or not. So either most app designers are deaf mutes or you haven't had a decent solution to work with. Now I'm going to set up a video which I'm going to show you in a moment. It's hardware agnostic. It has two microphones. There's a microphone at each hinge in the sunglasses. That's all, just two microphones. What you're gonna see is a real-time frame for frame with noise cancellation and without noise cancellation. The speech recognition worked really well in 2008 when this was made. It works even better today. Can you play the video, please? So what you just saw there was noise cancellation or noise suppression that was done in 2008 with two microphones, a Bluetooth interface, and you saw it recorded frame for frame exactly as it happened with and without noise suppression. So I believe that a UI can significantly enhance the present applications and the future applications that designing for the future means including audio, which for a lot of users means speech recognition in whatever language they naturally speak, whatever language they want to use, in addition to video. Designing without audio is like designing movies without sound. Uh, wireless resources. There's an infinite number of AI platforms that are being developed. They first started with uh, Google and Amazon, uh, Baidu, and others around the world working with speech and translation, uh, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, 
But now it, it's moved into industrial platforms that are out there to do work for the user if you can reach those. So monitoring those capabilities and being able to fuse them or integrate them seamlessly into your application. So that if you pull up a form, I registered for AWE hands-free. I used the application that I'm describing to use a headset to be able to go online, insert my cursor where I needed to put my name, say my name, go to the next line, insert my address, insert my email, et cetera, check any boxes you need to check and punch out. I did all that hands-free. I did it all with speech. And I did it as easily as if I'd sat there with a keyboard. And I could have done that hanging from monkey bars. So you want to be able to actively uh, monitor your situational awareness. You want to monitor local and remote sensor data, whether it be with the tools and headset that you're using or in the ambient environment you're working in. Out of the box, this UI multitasks AI wireless platforms. You designate to it the types of AI platforms that you're interested in using. It will monitor those. It'll monitor them based on your ge uh, geographical location as well as their availability and or signal strength. It enables you to do predictive user support. It, simu it, it assimilates AI and merges distributed processing. So when, when you're using this user interface, you don't know where the service necessarily is coming from. But the results that you're looking for in the case of filling out a simple form, I didn't have to pull out a keyboard and I didn't have to sit there and spell everything out one letter or numeral at a time. It coexists with other voice-based systems. So even though we're using a command and control platform in normally with a host device, you can also be using Google, Alexa, Cortana, Baidu, a number of other solutions at the same time. So how do you get access to this? Well, we use the full Android Studio and the full Microsoft Visual, depending on whether you want to operate in Android or Windows. We built plugins for that, so all of the features and capabilities that we can bring to you in this user interface are there for you to be able to plug in to the applications you presently have or the new applications you're developing. You don't have to understand head tracking and gesture. You don't have to understand how the speech or noise cancellation works. You just have to tell it what you want to utter and it listens for it and it automatically works. You don't have to say, hello, Google. You just have to talk. It listens to what you're saying while you're working. It's on 100% of the time. So it brings to you the speech recognition services, the head track services. It brings to you the remote monitoring of sensors and the management of devices and USB cameras that might be in your presence. We've added to it an enterprise class barcode scanning platform, which also has the ability to do full OCR and multi-tag scanning at the same time. And we've added the entire Zoom video communication platform. So you have a state-of-the-art commercial platform available to instantaneously create conferencing between yourself and others, utilizing a resource that's growing rapidly amongst industry today. So, do you have any questions, suggestions, or recommendations? Yes, he's got the microphone there. Would you like a clicker? <laughs> I don't need a clicker. I just want to know if um, you mentioned some of the uh, software environments that this could be. All right. You mentioned some of the software platforms that this would be. Integrated. You need to turn the mic on. He gave it to you dead. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, here we go again. Um, you mentioned some of the software platforms this could be integrated with. Yes. Would it be integrated eventually with Unity 3D? Are you guys thinking about that? <sighs> Haven't thought about it yet. Okay. It certainly could be. It, it's uh, agnostic to the either operating system or the software application that you're using. It, it's um, a user interface, not really an application. It's It's a piece of soft, multiple pieces of software which pull together resources and give you access to those resources. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there other questions? Hi. Um, I'm curious, how does the software work with accents? Right now I'm working on a HoloLens project uh, for manufacturing, and of course my plants, I've got one in Wisconsin, and I've got one on the west side of Virginia. And so when I go down and bring my developments, thinking that my voice recognition is going to be perfect so they can hold tools in their hands while they're operating, come to find out I've had over a 50% failure rate. And then uh, you know they always say, what accent? I don't have an accent. You've got the accent. So sure, sure. how does it work? I, I understand exactly. Well, <clears throat> the, the big explanation is there's what's called a xenolinguistic mutating algorithm that sits on top of the speech recognizer. It listens for this, the way you say syllables, vowels, and consonants. It doesn't listen for anything else. And when you choose a language that you're going to operate in, Typically, it will specifically look for the accents and special pronunciations that would follow. Um, we've used it quite successfully for a number of years. But the xenolinguistic mutating algorithm, you can think of it as a whole bunch of dials on a wall. And when you say something, it remembers how you pronounce that. Now, typically, the uh, speech tags that you use for executables on a screen are unique. You don't have several things that all sound exactly the same. So consequently, even if it comes up to something that it's not quite sure of, it will come back on the screen and ask you, you want one or two, A or B? And then it goes, okay, now I know how you say A, I, E, I, O, U. Because we pronounce A's as A's, but other languages pronounce them as A. Other pr languages pronounce E as A, and I as E, and so on and so forth. So, I think we've done a, a very good job of tackling it. Most of our software development is done in India, and there are 1,600 languages, I'm told, in India, most of which don't even have a, a, a written form. And one of the mm, pleasurable moments for many of our software developers in India are taking it around and passing it to their friends who come from different areas of India to use the same, same thing. So you find that it, it will aggressively listen to what you're saying. It's expecting a certain expectation. You typically will train somebody in English, and once they're trained in English, as they're using their English and pronouncing um, the executables that are given to them on the screen or in their ear, it will learn from those, and it continues to learn. It gets faster and faster the more you use the system. So we haven't found that a problem. The other nice thing is being able to offer it in multiple languages means that a person on a production line at Mercedes who speaks Spanish can be next to somebody in French. They're both using exactly the same software tools, but they're using it in their own native language. All their screens, PDFs, everything come up in their own native language. They make fewer mistakes. Any other questions? It's amazing. I've spent 10 years developing this, and I guess I've answered all your questions. Thank you very much. Uh, well, oh. extending on what you just said, shouldn't it be looking to the entire sentence? Because, I mean, I'm Mexican originally, and, and I make a lot of mistakes when I speak, and I, I say infer instead of imply, or things like that. So shouldn't the algorithm look at the whole sentence and then try to decipher what the person is saying? Well, first off, you have, you have two types of speech recognition. Um, the one that is most commonly used is command and control. It's like uh, telling your dog to sit. Uh, you may have a word for sit in Spanish and a word sit in English. Um, if you're using it in an English mode, it's looking for you to say sit. You may slightly mispronounce that, but on the screen there won't be anything else that sounds like, looks like sit. So it is looking for a certain number of responses. You, you could have anywhere from one to maybe a hundred things you can say on an individual screen, none of which, no, no two are alike. When you say one, it will recognize and remember how you pronounce the syllables, vowels, and consonants, even though you're speaking English as a second or third language. And it gets better and better at recognizing the unique characteristics of your pronunciation versus a person in Louisiana versus a person in Texas or a person in Boston. Because um, <clears throat> I went into a men's store in Boston one day looking for, for a pair of pants, and I walked up to the guy and I said, where are your khakis? And the guy reaches into his pocket and pulls out his car keys. Because in Boston, khakis are what you drive your car with. Khakis are what I wear with a blue blazer. 
Anyone else? Yes. Okay, could be, but generally since we're using these with headsets, and if you think of people working as teams in manufacturing or service or maintenance, if I give a command to my headset because I need a certain screen software application, it, you may not want the same screen software application. You may be doing something else. So you don't want crosstalk. Um, you want to limit it so that it hears only you and doesn't pay any attention to anyone else. But if you were using the application in a generic sense on the middle of a table, sure.